If you are anything like me, then you'd play tennis all day and night just to get better. Because the more the better, right? Well, not really. Turns out that recovery is just as important if you want to keep training hard for a very long period of time. Which, of course you do, because where do you think you can get otherwise? And I know what you're thinking, but how can you say no to an extra hour of tennis? Well, trust me, when you have experienced what it's like to be overtrained, then you don't think twice, your no comes automatically. Feeling tired, lazy and out of energy all the time is not fun. Your legs don't go, no matter how hard you try to move them. You are slow to react and quickly run out of energy. It's truly horrible. And what's worse, it can take days or even a week of doing nothing to get back to feeling normal, back to just get a good practice again. So yes, being overtrained is definitely something you don't want to happen. But how? How on earth can you stay away from overtraining while still training as hard as you can? Because that's what you want, isn't it? I wish I could tell you just listen to your body, but mm, I tried it myself and it didn't go very well. The temptation to push yourself too hard is just too big when you are hungry for wins, so it just doesn't work. Which is why it's been more than six months since I got some extra very welcome help with that. The Whoop. Just so you know, Whoop is a fitness tracker, but not just another one. Whoop is the best in the market at tracking sleep and measuring recovery. It's no coincidence that it's worn by the best pro athletes in the world. I got mine as a birthday gift and since then I never took it off. Literally. In fact, there's no need to, not even to charge it. Because here's how it works. In practice, you charge this black little thing through USB cable and when your Whoop needs to be fed, poof, you just attach it on top and it gets charged while it keeps doing its job. So you really don't miss a thing. Isn't it genius? Anyway, after wearing my Whoop non-stop for the last six months, I can tell you, no way I could have trained as hard as I did for such a long period of time without it. I would have for sure ended up overtrained and thought that my body just couldn't handle more than that. Instead, by wearing Whoop, I learned and am still learning what my body can really do. And that's a lot more than I thought, when it actually gets what it needs. And yes, it did take quite some time for me to actually trust its findings and listen to its advice without questioning it. But day by day, inside after inside, it earned my trust and even changed my habits. Who would have said that proper sleep and rest are all our body needs to perform at its full potential? For sure not me, but that's because I wasn't doing them right. For example, I've always thought I was a good sleeper. Not only I can fall asleep in record time, but I can actually do it wherever and no matter the conditions and the position. Light, no light, bed, floor, lying, sitting, standing, I don't really mind. And once I'm asleep, someone could literally take the bed from under me and I wouldn't even notice it. That is how deep is my sleep. And yes, that is just luck, but I've always done my part as well. In fact, I used to always set my alarm clock 8 hours after my bedtime, because you know, 8 hours is the minimum, no? Well, since I got my boob, I understood this. With all the training I'm doing, 8 hours of sleep are rarely enough to fully recover. And even when they are enough, by setting the alarm clock just 8 hours after my bedtime, I'm practically signing up for 7 hours of sleep. And here's why. Even though my sleep efficiency is really good and more than 90% on average, the amount of time that I spend awake every night usually amounts to 1 hour. Hmm, but didn't I say I was a good sleeper? I did, and still think I am, but it does take me a few minutes to fall asleep and even though I don't realize it, I apparently have several disturbances uh, happening through the night interrupting my sleep. So all summed up, that's one hour, the famous extra hour that I now always schedule in order to make sure that I actually get the recommended amount of sleep. Ah, if only I had known, sleeping enough is really the number one habit to get right in order to work hard, recover fast and work hard again. Without it, actually all the rest doesn't matter much and goes to trash. So once I got this right, I learned another quite surprising fact. Not only was I not sleeping enough, but also very inconsistently. I've always thought that getting enough sleep was enough no matter when, but turns out when it comes to recovery, it actually does make a difference. And here's what I understood since I got my whoop. If optimal sleep and recovery were a pizza, then sleep performance would be the bottom and the tomato sauce. 
while slip consistency would be the toppings. Toppings alone don't make a pizza, just as having a consistent schedule doesn't help with recovery if all you sleep is 3 hours per night. But toppings do make the pizza better, as long as the bottom and the tomato sauce are there, just as sleep consistency improves recovery as long as sleep performance is on point. Not sure if this pizza example helped or just made you hungry, but the point is, if you have to choose between sleeping enough or sleeping consistently, then definitely go for sleeping enough. But since there's no reason to choose only one, to give yourself the best possible chance of recovery, then make sure you sleep enough and have a consistent bed and waking up time. But enough about sleep. Let's now get to what I've learned by monitoring the trend of my recoveries instead which is, ignoring the first signs of fatigue can do more harm than good. I used to think more is always better, that it's normal to be tired sometimes, that you just need to make an effort and just do it, but no, I was wrong. Actually, when you feel tired on the court, most of the time it's because you have already gone past the optimal amount of strain during the previous days and haven't properly recovered yet. In practice, your body is screaming at you and you should prioritize rest ASAP. Trust me, I've been there, and not only once, a few times, and the story is always the same. Whenever I ignore a low recovery and I exceed the optimal amount of strain recommended by Whoops Strain Coach, what happens is a snowball effect. The next day my recovery is going to be lower, the day after even lower, and so on, even for a week, no matter how easy I take it the next days. Ah, that's so bad! So, instead of doing like me and regretting it later, just give yourself permission to take a rest sometimes. It's not a waste of time, just the opposite. It's your way to ensure you can keep training hard for forever. And voila, that's all for this video. I really hope these little nuggets that I learned from Boop can keep you away from overtraining. Even though I know it's gonna be hard, it's hard for me that I have Boop checking on me all the time, I can imagine for you. Just keep this in mind, training too much actually harms your performance as much as not training enough does. Speaking of which, how crazy is it that nowadays most people struggle to get enough exercise in, while we tennis players have the exact opposite problem? Because we all do, right? By the way, let me know in the comments below how you feel about it. Do you think you are training too much or too little? And if you found your balance, then congrats, that's the way to go. You should be proud. But now I really have to go. So I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!